Hello and welcome. My name is Chris. My handle is Montevaca, and this is the fifth in my series of Unity 3D scripting tutorials. In this tutorial, we are going to be playing with the line renderer to create paths of objects that um, that are moving. Basically, um, it's a little hard to explain just in words, so I'm going to show you in a completed project that I have done recently. Um, so let's open this up. Okay, so hit play. Okay, so we got this is kind of similar to one of my other tutorials. I've just done a few other things. So if I click and move out some of these moons, we see them affected by gravity and completing a path, but we also have everywhere they go, they draw a line. And we can walk around and see, and actually, if the uh, objects get destroyed, the lines actually fade out. This is what I'm going to be showing how you, showing you guys how to do today. So let's actually quit this out. Um, I'm going to pause the video real quick and open it back up to our to the orbiting tutorial uh, project that we're doing, and we're going to use that as a starting point. Okay, just a moment. Okay, hey guys, I've got it opened up now. So um, here I'm going to run it real quick to show you guys, remind you guys where we left off last time with this tutorial. If we run, we see there's just a bunch of moons that uh, orbit or that uh, get um, start moving around an Earth. They're affected by each other's gravity and both the Earth gravity. So, uh, first thing I'm going to do with this before we get started, I'm going to delete all except for one moon. That way, we can make changes to this one moon and just duplicate it, and then not have to worry about making changes to all the moons. Uh, once that's done, we're going to open up the orbiting script, which is the script we've got attached to this moon. And just a second. Um, I'm going to do this tutorial, scripting tutorial, slightly different than I have done the last few. I've got, I'm going to copy and paste most of the code in here just to save a little bit of time because I type really slow, but I'll go through it line by line. Uh, let you guys know exactly what I'm doing with this code. So this is the first chunk of code that we're going to add. Let's see. And these are a bunch of variables that we need to add. So the first variable that we're adding is a public game object empty notice struct. And what this is, this is a, a pointer to a prefabbed object that we're going to create that's just an empty object. Um, that is going to have a script on it that is going to allow us to uh, fade the line. Um, and that's, uh, uh, line renderers are always attached to objects. So by creating an empty game object with that script, we're going to attach the line render to this object once we've instantiated it. The, uh, game object, uh, path orb, this is the, uh, the object that we're going to instantiate the empty no destruct object into. And we'll, this is where we'll add the line renderer. The line renderer path, that's the line renderer we're going to add to path orb. Um, and then what I've got here, and this one's interesting, I've created an array of colors. So it's just a private color array, and I called it ran. And here we got just color uh, dot red, color dot yellow, color dot blue, magenta white and cyan so that's seven colors we're going to use that so that we can pick a random uh, two random colors um, out of to allow for randomness in our the line color of our line when we run it and so we got two private color variables which is where we're going to store the two random colors and this is going to help us for uh, fading out later which i'll get into um, vector three preposition this is going to be the position where the last vector was, um, well, the last point of the line render, or was that we need to connect to the current point. Again, uh, that'll make more sense once I get around to it. Uh, we're going to use the next variable for time and the infinite variable for uh, the number of um, points in the line. So let's start. Uh, the, a lot of those will make a little bit more sense once we start getting coding. So the first part we're going to come to come down here to awake and we're going to add a bunch of code here and then go over it. So we've added a bunch of code here. 
first thing we've done is we've taken the path orb, which is our game object from up here, and then created a game object, which is an instantiated version of the empty node destruct at the position of the moon position, which is the uh, object that this is created to create it on. Uh, this object is, I'm sorry, the script is uh, attached to, and it's also on that object's rotation. So that's where the line is going to start. And then now we're going to create a path, which is a line renderer, which is uh, path orb dot add component line renderer. I don't think we need these parentheses, parentheses actually. But uh, we will come back to that if that throws an error on us. Um, next part, we're going to do, we're going to change the material of the path orb. This is for the renderer. So it's a path dot material is equal to new material uh, and then in parentheses shader dot find and then in uh, quotation marks uh, particles slash additive and this is going to give the line renderer that look that you saw when I demonstrated it. Okay, And then the next part of our code we're going to find two random colors from our array up here. So we're going to do array the ran array and then we're going to find a random number between the range of 0 and 6. Since there's 7 colors, we uh, the indexes start at 0 and end at 6. So it's going to pick out two random colors. And then we're going to set the colors on the path. So it's path.setColors and then our two random colors. And then we're going to set the width on our path, which is path.setWidth. And I found that uh, uh, 0.15 float on both works the best for what I was trying to go for. You guys can play with that as much as you want. We are going to set i out to start at 1. We're going to change this as we loop through it, but it starts out at 1. So path.setVertex is i. So it's got one vertex. And now we're going to take the current time and store it in our next um, uh, float value, but we're going to add a, a, a 0.1 float. I think that's a going to be a, a bit of a second or so, a tenth of a second. I'm unsure of that, but I, I did, uh, when testing this, it seems to give me the effect that I want. You guys can change that around a little bit. Um, then we're going to do path.setPosition0, because this is going to be the first, um, this is going to be the starting point of the path. And it's going to be set moon position. And, and then we're going to uh, put the pre position, which is going to be the previous position of the path's position, as moon position. Okay, This is just only going to be the first thing that happens with this uh, line renderer uh, right during uh, awake. So now what we're going to want to do is come down here to update. And now here's where we're actually going to put in the code that's going to create the effect of drawing the line. So it's actually kind of simple. So if we pull this out and go back here. So what this does is it checks if the current time is more than the time that we set as next up here. So it waits a little bit and then once it gets there it's going to increment i. It's going to set the uh, vertex count to i so it's going to add an, one more vertex to the total path of the line. And then it's going to set the position of the vertex as i minus 1 so since we started out as zero and uh, and i is one, it gets incremented to two, and we but we want to set position one, so we we uh, decrement it once to get uh, to get one, and then we set it at the current moon position. So basically, what this does is it takes um, the next position and connects it to the previous position. So it takes the uh, up here was the previous position of the moon. In between this time delay, the moon has moved a certain amount of time, and now we are now connecting between the previous position and the new position of the moon. Then we're going to uh, increment the time some more, the next, so that we wait some more before we do this again. And then we're going to do travel distance is not necessary for us, so we're going to take that out. And then we're going to do pre-position. So this is re-putting the pre-position. So this is points to where 
it's going to be connected next time as moon position. And oh, you know what? I actually don't think we even need preposition. Now that I mention it, yeah, let's see. Oh, let's paste it. Yeah, preposition. I'm using to calculate the distance, and since I'm not going to bother going into, um, we're not going to be using distance for this tutorial, we can actually take that out. Sorry, guys. Make it a little bit simpler for you guys, but uh, just uh, as a heads up, if you wanted to calculate the distance that a, a, the moon has traveled, you, could pro you can use that preposition to calculate the distance like I had, but um, we're gonna, I'm gonna keep it simple. Um, so that's done. If we save, um, we're gonna come out here and we open this up. And we now have orbiting with an empty no destruct object on it. So that's good, but we need to now create this empty no destruct object. So let's go up here to game object and create empty. And now we're going to need to create the fade script that we want. So create a C sharp script. We call this fade. Okay. Let's see. Do, do, do. Oh, let's actually change the name because I guess I've already got a fade script active around here. Hang on just a second. We're gonna I'm just gonna call this fade two. Just to make it easier. Sorry, I'm a little disorganized with my code in this project. So we're opening up the fade script, which is just gonna be a a go a default script and here since it's a shorter script I'm just gonna copy it all in and we're gonna go through this line by line and show you what it says okay okay so we've got this thing should be changed to two okay so we got the basic stuff now we come up here and fade dur duration this gives us the amount of time it takes for it to fade to completely clear um, boolean clear is just uh, a a boolean variable that fires that if um, if it is true it starts to fade so once uh, once the object hits something in our orbiting script we set this boolean variable to cl uh, to clear and and to true and then it the script activates so we're going to do that. Then we've got the two colors that we're going to use because we, we need that to actually fade it a bit. And then we got fade time, which uh, is a variable we are going to use to um, sh to sh show that... Uh, hang on, sorry. Hey guys, so I ran a little low on time on this video, so I'm going to cut it up into two pieces and we will continue in part two. Thanks.